Hey everybody, Headspace Connections here, back with another video. Uh, this time we're going to be talking a little bit about switching in a system. Kind of for, you know, systems, non-systems alike. How to deal with it if you notice it, and for systems if you do notice these certain changes that may be a clue as to that you are about to switch. And I know our clothing is a little bit different today. Uh, we actually have makeup on this time. I'm not sure who did what. I do. The hair, I think, is Yona's. She has a style similar to Pain from Final Fantasy, but... Yeah. Anyway. Now, back to what we were <laughs> supposed to be talking about. Uh, alter switching in DID is a very common thing with this disorder you know uh, switching in general it means to to change something out but in DID it kind of can have the same connotation but basically it means to change and alter part head mate however you want to say it now everyone with this disorder has parts that you know compromise his or her comprise not compromise comprise his or her you know personality each different part uh, kind of like an example would be say non-system say oh man there's a part of me that really wants to go outside and walk and exercise but yet at the same time I don't want to kind of the same thing except ours is a little more on a more extreme level um, because yeah, we may have those same feelings, but those are more extreme parts of ourselves, basically to the point where they become their own sentient beings, and they can have their own thoughts, beliefs, opinions, uh, wishes, needs, styles, obviously, etc. So, now, unlike for non-systems, when you have that kind of, like, differences in... Per personality or difference in general for us because it is much more extreme switching can be very difficult it can be very jarring it can be very disconcerting if because it's different it feels weird now if you have DID or you know someone with it it's it's important to kind of recognize the signs of when someone with DID is about to switch and kind of what you can do to handle that because I know that's where sometimes problems can arise is when it catches you off guard so the best thing to do would be to recognize it ahead of time. Now, every system is different, obviously, but there are going to be three basic... I can't count today. We are very co-con right now, so bear with me. Um, three basic switches. Uh, now, the best example I have heard was by Multiplicity and Me, how she described them as being diff in different states of a car. The first one obviously is in the passenger seat or co-conscious and this one you can have little to no amnesic barriers. Now the second one is like being in the back seat. Still co-conscious but because you're in the back seat you so to speak those amnesic barriers can be a little bit stronger. It's like you're there you know the general idea and gist of what's going on, but you don't get those details as you would as if you were fronting or passenger co-conscious. And the third one is where you have complete blackout, complete amnesia. Basically, you're in the trunk. You don't know what's going on. You don't know where you're going. And... It's, that's it. I mean, 
no recollections, no nothing. That's usually when you will have a full on switch as opposed to co-consciousness. Now, as I said, switching between systems is a lot different, but we do have some examples of how it feels like for us. Because there's so many of us, being able to tell who's out, when, and where, it takes a long time to be able to kind of figure out what shows up with who. So just because you have these experiences or you don't have these experiences either or, or you have some that I did not list, this is not going to be very extensive. This is just like basic things that we have noticed with ourselves. So if you don't have these things or if you have more that I didn't say, it does not make you any less valid. Now, so one of the things that we do notice, um, obviously hearing a headmate's voice in your head, um, all of a sudden your head will just get like really foggy, uh, you can't concentrate, you can't process information, you can't think straight, it's just difficult to like just comp be able, sometimes even be able to just look at something. It's like for us, especially since I have the stigmatism in my left eye, I do notice that when we switch out or are co conscious and someone is taking over like that side, so to speak, my eyes will start to unfocus and refocus to try to accommodate itself to that person that I'm co conscious with or that's trying to take over or front. Um, when it, this happens too sometimes. It's like when you're talking to somebody, all of a sudden it sounds like you're in a tunnel and anybody that's trying to talk to you from like the outside it's 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 like they get drowned out like you're talking to them from like far away and you can't hear exactly what it can't concentrate exactly on what's going on or what it is that you guys are talking about um head will start to feel chaotic like all of a sudden you've just got a lot of things coming in at once uh headaches that medications pain relievers can't take can't get rid of uh, sometimes it'll be like even physical things like for us if there's a lot of us co-conscious at once I'll notice that um, like even right now I don't know how many of us are out right now but my hairline right in here and my head will start to tingle kind of like those massagers that you put they look weird like spider things and you put them on your head and move them up and down and you get kind of and if they have a vibration to them a vibration option that's what it feels like throughout my entire head I just feel this constant tingling all over and sometimes uh, itch uh, some of us have OCD issues so when some of us come out it's like my face certain areas around my face especially like my jawline my mouth my forehead my eyes will start mostly my eyes will just start to itch horrendously uh, certain phantom pains especially if it's a non-human alter like if they have wings or horns or something that aren't there but you feel pains like here or on your back whatever it is that it may be uh, sometimes it'll even be like your face like my a face will start to like kind of change so to speak to like muscles will start to reactivate in certain areas that don't normally are to accommodate said uh, person that's co either co-conscious or trying to come, trying to take front. And it's weird. It's like you just feel your facial expression just changing. It's, it's a really odd experience. Um, handwriting, especially when we're journaling and stuff, will like to start showing some changes and variations. Like if you have a really pointed, sharp, style and then all of a sudden it starts getting really flowy and or you know certain things that don't normally show up in your handwriting start to come in there uh start dissociating you'll stare like blankly at the wall or the floors sometimes lose time i know i lose time when that happens a lot uh but you kind of like you're just there just staring and you kind of feel like you're being moved a little bit out of the way uh, 
eyes, like I was kind of saying, will they start to kind of change or refocus? Like we don't have major color differences, like from, because our eyes are almost are practically black, but sometimes they'll turn light brown. Uh, I noticed the ring around our eyes, like everybody has a ring around their eye. It'll sometimes get thicker or thinner depending on who it is. And sometimes the sheen of our eye will change. I've seen it to where it was almost like a bluish gray sheen. It's still dark, but the tone behind it, I've seen it where it was uh, blue, bluish, kind of grayish. I even had a friend that told us one time, it's like, your eyes look like um, blood pools. Cause she said that they had like a really deep red tone to them. So we do notice that some like changes like that happen. Nothing as drastic as turning into bright blue which would be really cool if it ever did happen. Probably would feel really weird though. Um, this one, did not know for the longest time what this was. We always thought we were just cold natured. Shivers that will run through you at the most random times. Like you're cold, you're not. But all of a sudden it's like shivers run through your skin and everything and you're, you just start to get uh, goosebumps. We call them goosebumps. I don't know what, how you refer to them as, but those little bumps that start to get on you when your skin gets cold. Um, you really, we really start to feel detached from yourself, like kind of along with that co-conscious line or backseat line is where it feels like you're there, but somebody else is taking care of running the show and running everything else. Uh, dizzy, lightheaded, sometimes that'll hit. Um, thoughts seem to get louder like especially when there's people talking while you're trying to concentrate on something it's like thoughts just barrage like somebody's got a mic or a speaker right next to your ear uh i know sometimes especially depending on who it is don't tend to make eye contact if you're kind of switching i do notice that our head automatically starts going down like a robot just shut down and we're just like there like we may respond if you ask us something, but we're really, I don't, we really don't know what's going on. That's what we call kind of like the cloud that we're in. Um, oh, I did notice this. It's like, depending on who you're switching with, if say if they're taller in the headspace or smaller, we'll start to like take like a really deep breath, like just, like this enormous sigh of relief, like you're tr trying to get rid of built up stress. That's, or like all of a sudden, like you're okay. And then the next minute you start to feel like the muscles in your back or your arms or something are really tense or has start having like weird bursts of energy and you just have to stretch. It almost feels like you just woke up type of feeling. It's, really really odd uh sometimes realize be looking around the room like you have been in the same room for like two hours but all of a sudden you're looking around like you're not really sure what's going on just kind of staring around suspiciously uh frequently watch clocks it's like half the like you look at the clock on your phone or something, but you usually have to look at it two or three times because you weren't paying attention the first time to make sure how much time you've lost and things. Um, it's a lot of different things that can sign. It's like more signs and symptoms and things that you would probably notice more so as anybody else, but yawning, we yawn a lot. Uh, and or notice like you start to feel like your face is kind of dropping like you're all of a sudden just getting kind of tired shut that shutting down feeling and that i notice is one that people notice the most is that tired shut down look now that is just like a basic list of some of the things that happen to us when we switch um now causes for switching can be anything. It varies from person to person, system to system. Um, in my system, we don't have complete control over switches and stuff, but 
we do have people that help keep an eye on who's out at certain times to make sure nobody's out when they're not supposed to be. But uh, some things that can cause possible triggers can be memories, uh, flashbacks, uh, a sensation from any of the five senses like sight, touch, smell, hearing, and stuff like that can set that off. Uh, strong uncomfortable emotions like all of a sudden you're in a crowded room of people you don't know and you start to have that panic feeling can cause it extreme stress uh, certain times of the year say if they were meaningful in a good or a bad way looking at old photographs uh, outsider or you while talking mention another one's name can bring that out tremendous anxiety like I said crowded places, noises, uh, so, and for us, sometimes even journaling and doing art projects because everybody will do a little piece of something. So we do feel like that cycle that goes on. Now, being able to understand your triggers uh, is good practice just in itself so that you will be able to kind of prepare yourself for what you may need in case something comes up. Like, if you start to notice there's a certain altar that brings out this, depending on who it is, you can prepare for that ahead of time. Now, obviously, this is, because it's in the system, DID is a defensive mechanism. The switches are done to keep a system functioning and safe. So everything in the system, switch-wise, is going to there's a reason behind it. You're not just going to switch usually for no reason. There's always going to be something, whether you know what that reason is or not. But it's usually going to be a response, most generally, not all the time, a response to something seen as threatening. Or, you know, you can always have positive triggers too. Now, even though switching is a protective thing and it's normal, those switches can be, like, disturbing and exhausting especially when parts come and go and it's like a revolving door I will sometimes use the term as like your head feels like a roulette wheel because everybody's just going through a million miles an hour a minute and it's like and that's how you feel that's usually when the dizziness and lightheadedness will hit for us it's like that where it feels like jockeys in horse races scrambling for that first place you know and it's it's a it's a daunting experience some of the times it's not a fun it's not a fun thing I mean switches can be overwhelming they can be frustrating and sometimes even embarrassing you I mean even if the only one that notices them is you it's just the fact that they happen and you're trying to figure out why it's that can really get you now, obviously, this is where communication, dialogue within your system is going to be more helpful because you want to get to a point where you don't have to worry about who's going to be popping up. Uh, but trying to block a headmate, like if somebody's trying to come out, seldom works and usually it's not going to have a very good outcome. It's sometimes just going to cause, you know, hostility and anger to everybody else if you try to block somebody that's why it helps to be prepared ahead of time now um, generally like I said because DID is more of a defensive thing outsiders or non-systems generally are not going to even notice when a switch happens especially for us since we're severely polyfragmented majority of the time we don't even notice until like minutes or hours later that it happened even our therapist can't really tell when we've switched out unless there's like big obvious changes now like in language and accent especially but like behaviors differences in beliefs uh thoughts that aren't usually what would be the norm um Mannerisms and body language is where we really notice where the biggest difference we feel is the biggest giveaways are, but um, you would be surprised. I mean, unless you're really perceptive, a lot of people will not ever notice it at all. Now, 
there are some systems who aren't as covert with their switches. There are some, they're a little bit rarer, but they are what they call overt, which it's very obvious when they switch. You know, like, uh, I've never seen a overly overt system switch. The only one that I've gotten close to probably seeing where it was a little more noticeable was when we watched uh, Multiplicity in these uh, BBC sp special that they did a couple years ago when she was switching to Jake and her face started to itch and she was scratching her eyes and stuff and it was like she was having like a change of energy. That was the most overt we had seen. Now, there are some that if you guys are more overt than that, that's okay too. That's just how you guys work. Now, for non-systems or friends of systems, either or, whether you're system or not, what do you do after someone has switched? Trying to figure it out after you notice that they have switched is going to be too late. So that, with that being said, you want to plan for this ahead of time, especially if you're not sure who it is or if you're not or if you do know who it is and the reaction can vary, a plan will help, obviously. Now, when somebody comes out, obviously they're gonna wanna feel you know, safe and cared for just like anybody else. So figuring out ahead of time is gonna help and find out with the system, you know, ask them if it's, o ask if it's okay if a switch happens that you can ask if you know who's out and or ask them what their name is however be sure to make sure that's okay first like for us if we switch if we're in the middle of a conversation and you notice it generally unless we tell you otherwise we just want you to go ahead and just keep talking about what it was we were talking about because if we've switched off most likely with somebody co-conscious and we kind of know what was going on anyway but for us, our general rule is if we don't say who, don't worry about it. You know, if you're worried about names and stuff, just call us by the body name. That's like our basic name for everybody. It's the legal name, so it just saves time. Now, like I said, unless we say otherwise, don't be concerned about offending us, offending us in any way, shape, or form with that. Now, obviously, if it was an important conversation or something going on, yeah, it can be kind of, what's the word, maybe kind of agitating or something if they switched out, but, I mean, don't be rude about it. It's not always a controlled thing. You can't control it all the time. That's like being in a conversation with somebody and somebody else comes up they're trying to say hi but you basically blatantly tell them no I don't want to talk to you I'm talking to them it, you know obviously that person that you just told go away pretty much is going to feel offended by that or it's or is going to be hurt by it so don't try to do that I mean even if you don't particularly care for the said alter that they ended up switching out with be respectable don't be judgmental about it a lot of the times like I said the switches are unpredictable we don't mean to do it a lot of the time uh, like I said don't take it personally either because honestly it may not even have anything to do with you like I said being able to have the ability of complete co-consciousness with everybody in your system is a very, very difficult thing to obtain. I know we are, for the most part, I want to say maybe about, uh, and this is a really big guess, maybe 75% co-conscious. But because there are still a lot of us that we don't recognize and because, the, or it can be so many at once, it can be so easy to get pushed to the back burner, so to speak. So you're literally like having to scramble and fight to keep your way up at the front to, you know, keep up with what's going on. But uh, that was just a 
general basic overview of you know what you can do if you like I said if you're a friend of a non system the same advice we give for about with the littles and the kids if a kid comes out just you know ask questions because each system's different it's not gonna be cookie cutter for everybody you know we don't care if you ask who's out I mean you might not you might get frustrated with us because a lot of the times we can't tell and it's usually not just us so that's why we don't get offended if you still call us by the body name because we may not even know our own name at that moment so it's just whatever you know if it frustrates you imagine how it frustrates us but anyway that's about all we got for this video it was kind of a little bit longer than I expected it to be but I hope you guys enjoyed it maybe it was a little bit helpful uh, if you guys have any questions comments or whatever put you can comment down below uh, if there's something you guys would like us to talk about specifically or anything like that that is of concern or anything to you you know let us know if you guys follow us on Instagram or Pinterest hit us up I mean we'll answer our messages we'll, we try to get back to you as quick as possible now keep in mind though we have like three different Instagrams and uh, two Pinterests and other social medias and sites that, so if we're a little slow about it uh, please be patient with us we're trying but mm, I don't really have anything else to add, but I will say that we did open up a um, a coffee account where if you wanted to, you could give us, you know, donate a little bit if you like what we do. We are going to be using the funds to be able to buy better equipment, like a better camera to be able to do these videos and stuff, and or we have a Patreon. It just depends on what you guys want to do. And, of course, you're not under obligation to do it. But, if you guys have any ideas, we are looking as to what we could offer as awards for our Patreon. So, if you have any ideas, feel free to comment us that about that too. Because we're... We have some ideas, but we're still trying to work the bugs out of it, so to speak. But anyway, that's all we got for this video, and we'll see you guys for the next one. Alright, bye.